Melissa, what an absolute delight having you with me today. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I am absolutely fabulous, thank you. Thank you so much for sparing time to come talk to us. Um, I'm sure many people are thinking, well, who's Melissa? Um, so let's do some introductions, shall we? Why don't you tell everybody who you are and, and how we know each other? So hi, um, I'm Melissa. I'm currently a sixth form student at Churchill Academy. And I know Brandy because I reached out about some work experience with Pierre Health and I was fortunate enough to have a great few days work experience at Pierre. And it was an amazing opportunity having you. Um, in fact, I have to say you were our first um, group Pierre Health um, group um, work experience person. So we, we loved it, absolutely loved it. And since then we've had a couple more, but you were a trendsetter, uh, Melissa. You opened up the doors for everybody else. So thank you. Um, but can we just talk about why uh, why you actually reached out? Why why was work experience important to you? Um, and I know that you knew that you wanted to do something in medicine, but why did you need to do it? And why do you even want to do medicine? So um, I knew I wanted to do medicine. I knew it was like a career that really encompassed everything I love. You know, you're always with people. You're using such incredible knowledge in a pupil setting. But I think I reached out for work experience because it was important for me to have that in-person insight, like being able to see how all the teams run, how every different member of staff is working and how like a primary care setting really works. Because I think I knew on like a level, like, oh, this these members of staff are here, what, like this is how it works. But just being able to have that deeper insight and being able to talk to some of those staff as well, that was important to me. And... You've since then applied for med school, right? Yes, oh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So, and your A level is this year or next year? We're in 2023, in case somebody's watching this later, but this is next year, isn't it? Your A levels. Around May in 2024. Around May next year. Okay. So, look, I'm really excited that we've been able to, um, I don't know, be a part of the journey for you. So, so you knew you wanted to do this, and then you kind of thought about um, work experience. What did you think it was going to um, entail? And was the reality different when you actually did the in-person work experience? Um, I think when I first reached out, I thought that I'd have the opportunity to observe, you know, different set, like maybe one of the um, areas in Western and maybe just like get to sit there and observe. But sit really, in the corner and do something. Yeah. <laughs> But it was so much more than that. Like I got to be in 168 Medical, I was in Graham Road Surgery Horizon and then in the meetings on the last day. And it was just incredible, you know, getting to kind of see even in one area of Western, how everyone is managed differently, what goes on in the background. So yeah, it was way more than I expected. And, and, and what surprised you, Melissa? Was there anything that surprised you about the whole primary care um, and, and how it works? I think what surprised me was like there's so many different staff members in roles that I think the public don't know about. I think we often like see what's in front. You're like the nurses, GPs, receptionists. But there's so much going on in the background that I had had no clue was going on. And I think it's really insightful for me to see that and see how the practices really run and how everything is managed and how it's like such a massive team of people as well. Like what? Like what? What teams were were you quite surprised to see around? Um, I think like clinicians' assistants. I didn't know their role, and they taught me so much about like a lot of like the paperwork and admin side of things that I didn't know about, and I think a lot of the public don't know about as well. And also how the the care home hub at One Six Eight Medical. I did not know that was a thing before, and it was so valuable to see that. And also just how there's so many different um roles that work in primary care that we don't think could like the paramedics I didn't know that paramedics worked in primary care so that was really insightful to see that that is a part of it as well so you had some time with the amazing Dr Paris and the team at the care home hub tell me what you learned from it and what maybe either surprised you or made made you feel really um pleased to be there I think I really didn't know how many like care homes and the elderly population that we have in Western. It was such an eye opener. I was like, wow. And we'll say that they go out to all these care homes and they go out to see all these people. And that was something that I didn't know. And just learning about that sort of care that is given to those patients at home was really valuable. And did you get a chance to speak to 
some of the people that actually work in the hub because of course in the hub it's multidisciplinary so they all kind of different people coming together they wear the same scrap but a lot of them are from different um organizations How, was that a surprise to you and did you get to speak to a few yeah it was really I was very surprised and I got to actually go out to a care home visit as well oh, nice. with one of the yeah with one of the nurses and that was actually like seeing what they're doing on the visit was really important to me but yeah like you said there were so many different people the multidisciplinary team I was like there's doctors there was nurses there was other tech staff and it was like I was like whoa <laughs> very surprised so there is a lot of um, a lot of noise about doctors at the moment in the news. I'm sure you've um, you've seen and read some. How does that make you feel when when you're a um, an aspiring doctor? How how does that make you feel? I think when you first hear it, it does kind of frighten you a little bit. You're like, oh, I'm about to go on this five, six, seven, like very long journey, um, and you think, oh, is that what is going to happen at the end? But I think like speaking in person with some of the doctors um, when I was on my work experience and also reading their point of view online rather than just like what the media shows you is so important because they do love their jobs and they are working so hard for the people. But there are just these barriers and these problems that the NHS is facing right now. But I think um, it is a bit scary, but I'm hoping that in the five, six years that I'm at medical school, that hopefully it'll all be OK. So let's start from the, that's a good answer, by the way, well done. Let's start from the end in terms of what you took away from being um, with us, so your work experience, and then maybe move to some of the things that you found really insightful. So what, what were your sort of couple of takeaways and then what, what and where did you find the insights came from? I think my main takeaway, like I said earlier, was seeing how massive the team really is, how there's so many roles, so much leadership and all of that like and seeing how like each practice kind of runs a bit differently depending on the patients that they're seeing that was really valuable and being able to sit in with some of the like clinicians assistants and the um I think I was with the I forgot what they're called the prescription clerks that was it sitting in with them and seeing what happens in the background that us as patients or us as the public don't see that was really really insightful um, and also, I think on the last day, I really enjoyed sitting in on the meetings. The leadership... Oh, yeah, of course. You did the, uh, talk, talk to us about those meetings. You did a clinical leadership team meeting and then you did the uh, One Western Locality meeting. So talk to us about those and, and what you, how you found them. I think like I, at school, personally really like um, being in part of, sort of leadership teams and seeing that that's something that you can do as a primary care like, clinician was really important. And just seeing that they all kind of had the same goal in mind, especially with the One Western meeting. There were so many different people. There was like the mental health teams. There was the council there. And just seeing how they all had the same aim and everyone was working together and like listening to each other's feedback as well. That was really valuable. Yeah. Did you think anything like that went on um, in the background? So I, I find it quite useful when I joined um, healthcare as well. I didn't realise that, you know, once a month people sit there and, and actually all of them talk together about the geographical region. It's insightful, isn't it? Did you know there was something like that in, in place? No, I like especially the one Western meeting. I had no clue that something like that was in place. And like you said, it was so eye opening to see that they were all in in it for that one area and they were all focusing on western that was really it was great to hear as well i think more of the public like if they heard about that it's like really nice to hear that everyone has the same aim in mind so your generation are super smart you guys are very good at thinking through things much much better than than some of us that are old and wrinkly so if you were to give us one advice in primary care as we're about to embark winter what would it be and why Oh, difficult question. Um, I think often people find it really difficult to reach out, even if it's just like a one six eight, like um, not one six eight, the online ask my GP. Sorry, mm -hmm. like even if it's just something small like that, I think often people don't reach out for that help, and then I think it often gets to the point where it can be a bigger problem. So I don't know if that would be like more of the elderly, like obviously they do go out in the care home hub. But I think some people could go unnoticed. And also, I think with the younger generation, we often find it difficult to ask for help, whether that's like more of like private um, 
healthcare reasons or mental health reasons, I think it often can be difficult. So I don't know if there's something about that. But also, I think kind of spreading the word about like what I learned on my work experience, how much is going on in the background that we don't see. People often get very frustrated if they can't book an appointment or if they're not being seen in time that they want to be seen. But actually, I think if they were able to see what goes on and how hard people are working with the same aim of their health in mind, I think that would be really valuable. That's some great advice, you know, helping young people navigate through mental health challenges and, and talking more, helping the elderly um, to get access if they haven't got, if they find um, asthma GP difficult, how we get access. And then also communicating a little bit more um, to everybody about what happens in the back back of the, um, you know, back of surgery, because it's a, otherwise it's a vacuum and people just assume. Um, so that's very helpful. Thank you, Melissa. It was an absolute, genuinely absolute pleasure having you uh, with us. We appreciate you spending time with us, and I'm glad that you've gone on to um, to to apply for med school. Come back and see us again, wouldn't you, when you're in your your second year or so, when things start making um, a bit more sense. Come back and, and spend some time with I'd us love to. to other places that you haven't been able to. So thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, and for coming to do this with us as well. We appreciate it. Thank you.